Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is the preparation it takes to install a tankless water heater during the middle of winter. So you see I mounted that tankless water heater behind the existing boiler and water heater in preparation to change it out. So you have a tanked water heater, that's a natural draft over there in the corner, and that's a 40 gallon water heater. And then you see you have a old natural draft boiler, so that's about 65% efficient. That's sitting right down there. So I'm going to have to really flush these lines out before I connect the existing baseboard to the new tankless water heater. As you see over there on the right, there's two oxygen barrier PEX lines, and that's already been pressure tested, and I installed another zone at this building as well. I also ran a new gas line over here in the corner down back, back through there, through the uh, foundation wall. I have it sleeved in PVC. But it's a one inch gas line in order to feed the tankless water heater. You see we have our one inch gas line right here going through the building and that's going over to our tankless water heater. And we have this pressure tested over to about seven PSI. We usually pressure test this up to about six PSI on a 30 pound gauge. So this here is 150,000 BTU input and it's a combi unit. So this is gonna take care of the domestic hot water and also the hydronic heating system for this house. Over here on the side you see I have a zone control relay so I have two zone valves prepped. I'm going to go ahead and take you in for a closer shot so you can see what I'm dealing with here but the remaining things that I want to do before I get ready to change this system out is I want to go ahead and wire up my zone control relay over here in the corner and I want to go ahead and cut my two two inch PVC holes through the sheetrock in this garage in order to prepare the exhaust and intake. I'm going to end up taking this chimney pipe right out of here because we can't reuse that. We want to use PVC piping and not galvanized piping like this. Then we'll just go ahead and patch that uh, sheetrock hole later. Down here I have the pressure test for the water lines. I just wanted to make sure that the new baseboard that I put in was going to hold pressure and that there was no leaks. So that's what I use this for. I also made one of these a lot longer than the other one so that I could wrap around and just connect. Uh, right into this pressure test just like this and then take the other line of this right in here. Down here I have some fittings already assembled like my cold water intake with my backflow preventer and also my pressure reducing valve and I have some links already soldered and ready to go. I'm going to put these boiler drains in after I'm done completing the hydronic circuits just to make sure that uh, where I connect these in, it's not getting overheated because I'm going to be putting Teflon tape on these and then uh, thread sealant, and I don't want to heat that up, so I'm going to wait to put these in till last. I have my return right here, not soldered in, but it's all built. I left that removable just so I can go ahead and take that water heater out of there. As you can see, it's kind of a tight area. So I have this gas line right here, just dry fit in place, it's not connected, you don't see any thread sealing on that. And then you have your, your manifold assemblies for flushing out your system right here. I would not tighten the unions on until we get them completely soldered in and ready, but you see I have piping off of it. And if we move this right here, you see I also have measured this pipe and got that ready to where I'm going to cut into the other line at. So you want to get as much of this done as possible. It does take a while just in order to start laying everything out. And what you want to do is start on a fresh day when you're doing your change out in the middle of wintertime. This way the homeowner is, or the building owner is not without heat overnight. So here you see we have the air scoop and auto air bleed. And then we are piped down to where the expansion tank is going to go. And then we have down here the circulating pump. It's a stainless steel circulating pump. And that's to help protect the tankless water heater. And then we have three zones already ready to go. So we just need to pipe that in once the water heater's gone. So I put this all together outside of here and then I soldered it in place just with one joint. So here we have our finished product. We have our tankless water heater set and running. Um, one thing here, when I did put the metal to close off the old hole for the chimney piping, I didn't put it in right away. Uh, so I had to cut around the pipes when I put it back in, but that's sealed in there. And I'll show you a little bit further down. I chose to take all the wires out of the bottom of the zone control relay that you see on the left-hand side right there. And brought them across. And you see all your piping coming down. 
your Honeywell zone valves right there. Uh, that existing wire with the EMT around it down low, that, that's, that was existing there. It has nothing to do with this boiler, but, uh, but that was there beforehand. Uh, also, I'll take you, take you in right here. If you can see this, we put in a potential third zone. So uh, just put a valve there and a cap on both the supply and the return. I chose to put the circulating pump the stainless steel circulating pump on the supply side on this and um, then there right below you see we have valves to valve off in case we needed to service the circulating pump and then we have up here our automatic air bleed and we have a valve to service the expansion tank we have a valve to service the air bleed right over here on the other side we have our kits uh, right here for our um, boiler right here and our domestic hot water in case we want to flush it which needs to be done once a year in the preventative maintenance so we took the manufacturers primary manifolds and we installed them on both the domestic hot water and also on the boiler uh, right here the PVC that's the drain for the tankless water here since it's above 90 percent efficient it creates condensate uh, just due to the flame process and we have our tankless water heater plugged right into our outlet right there. And we also have a, another plug right there for the Taco zone control. So it has its own dedicated circuit between the tankless water heater and also the zone control. So there's no other receptacles off of that. It just goes straight from there to the breaker box. Right here you see straight ahead we have our... Uh, backflow preventer and pressure reducing valve and we have valves on both sides of that just in order to service it so you see right here we have our backflow preventer and we're pressure reducing valve so so that's all there you notice that the circulating pump we have mc wire connected and going to the zone control relay because the the electrical wire needs to be shielded since this is in the garage our expansion tank is mounted tight up against our 2x4 right here and that's about it we have our three-quarter gas line coming over to the tankless water heater and you notice we have a valve then a drip tee and the union where it connects into the tankless water heater at so this gas line we had to run a new line over to this part of the garage in order to, su to support this tankless water heater this one happens to be a 150,000 BTU they typically range right around 120 to 199,000 BTUs. The majority of them are between 150 and 199. So we had to supply the correct amount of gas uh, volume over to this. We had to run our own separate line. So that was all pressure tested and taken care of ahead of time. And, and that's it. PVC exhaust, um, that can actually uh, be vented through either the sidewall or through the roof. And since we were taking out the old... Uh, metal chimney pipe we decided to use the same hole through through the roof so that was a little bit extra work just trying to get that done in the same day as we were doing the change out taking the old water heater out and the the old boiler so i just wanted to show you a glimpse of this job right here if you're looking for any of the tools i use out in the field i have them linked down in the description section below if you want to help support this hvacr training channel click here if you want to subscribe click here and if you want to see another hvacr training video click right here Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.